Hello, welcome to another video in my uh, machine learning series. And in this video, I am going to talk about something called linear regression. So I'm just actually going to move straight over to the whiteboard. I'm going to just move along here. Um, so why are we talking about linear regression? So uh, what I'm leading towards and what I'm going to get to if you keep watching these videos, they don't exist yet, but I'm going to keep making them, so eventually you might keep watching them, is I'm going to get to neural networks. And um, neural networks are, are useful and powerful in the case of large data sets with many, many variables, many, many inputs, parameters that we almost can't figure out mathematically how to make sense of it. Maybe a neural network can do that in some almost magical way. And we're going to get into all the details of that. But there are machine learning scenarios where we can actually just calculate precisely using a statistical method the relationship between inputs and outputs, right? So if we were to review, we have this idea of a machine learning recipe. Previously, I looked at k nearest neighbor as a possible algorithm to make sense of input data and predict some sort of output, whether it's classifying or predicting a price, that type of thing. So we have some sort of input we get some sort of output. So let's take the simplest scenario of inputs related to outputs. And um, the, a simple scenario for this would be something like a two-dimensional data set. Okay, so we could graph using something called a scatter plot, a data set. And we're gonna make the data set, bear with me here, uh, a temperature, the x-axis I want to uh, think of as temperature. So maybe, uh, I'm, for, I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm going to do this in Fahrenheit. I just have to apologize for that. I, I'll, I'll happily say maths, though, anytime you want. Um, zero degrees to uh, 100 degrees. I guess it could be negative, so in Fahrenheit. And then the y-axis will be ice cream sales. And uh, this was suggested uh, in the chat. Um, but I'm, I'm going to add to this uh, sorbet in quotes for no reason. Oh, I'm really, I mean, oh, I'm out of the frame. I'm out of the frame. I'm back. Okay. Uh, but you can see this, right? Yes, sorbet. I just not if I put my head in front of it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just because, you know, dairy doesn't really agree with me, just in case you were wondering. Okay. So I like sorbet. Okay. So uh, we could say like, oh, when it's, uh, you know, 24 degrees, there are only three ice creams are sold per day. And then on another day, it was uh, 90 degrees and there were 18. And you know, on, on another day that was 90 degrees, there were this many. And then you, know, you could imagine if you were the owner, the purveyor of an ice cream shoppy, <laughs> that you could keep track of your sales as it relates to temperature. And then what you could do is that you have all this data. Now, somebody comes into your place of business and says, okay, tomorrow the weather's going to be 50 degrees. What could you, like, could you make a guess as to how many ice creams you're going to sell? And so we could look and say, here's, you know, 50 degrees. Well, there was some other day where I sold this much when it was 50, some other day, some other day. How could we make a prediction? Well, this is a scenario where it appears there is a linear relationship a linear relationship between temperature and sales. The higher the temperature, the more the sales. The lower the temperature, the less. The fewer, the fewer the sales. So the idea of a linear regression is to figure out how can we fit a line, best fit a line to this data. And I could look at this and, hold on, I'm gonna be back in a second for some magic. In fact, this is the, by the way, this is like a historic moment. Not really, because that would be ridiculous. This is the first time I'm ever using a marker with a different color on my YouTube channel. Maybe suddenly I'll just get so many subscribers because they'll be like, I heard there's this channel with tutorials and a whiteboard where they use multiple colors. Okay, so um, we could make a guess and I could say like, look, that looks like a line that kind of fits the data. That's me just as a human being kind of eyeballing it. So now if I wanted to say, you know, when the temperature is 95 degrees, I could just look at 95 degrees, find this and find the corresponding, you know, uh, you know, 200 ice creams or whatever sold. So this is the idea of linear regression, looking at a data set and fitting a line to that data set. Now, how do you do this? 
there are many different methods. <laughs> and we're, I'm going to look at multiple methods in different videos. In this video, I would like to discuss <laughs> the method called ordinary least squared. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to write this down. Ordinary, oh boy, I got a little dizzy. Everything's going to be OK. Least squares. What does that mean? OK, so if we look at this line, we can compare uh, every single, this is the line that we've fit to the data, you know, by, as a human being, eyeballing it. One thing that I can do is I can say, look, how different is each one of these data points from the line? And I could see, like, I could essentially, like, look at its distance from the line. And the idea of ordinary least squares is the least squares method is we want to find the line that minimizes all of these distances. So what if we, okay, so if we could think of all of these as data points like, uh, you know, x0, x1, x2, x3, x, uh, x4, right? We could think of all of these distances as like d0, d1, d2, d3, d4. So if we took all of these distances, and squared them, d0 squared plus d1 squared plus d2 squared, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and added them all up together, that's the sum of all the squares of all the differences. We want to minimize this value. So how do we calculate the, for, the, the how do we find a line that minimizes all of those? So you might be asking, well, why are you, first of all, why are you squaring the values? Well, this is a common technique. You know, you'll notice that some points are below the line and some points are above the line. So the difference could be positive or negative. Squaring it gets rid of that difference. Um, OK, so how do we do this? Um, like I said, there are a variety of methods. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a formula for this, which I have written down. It's another historic moment. I prepared for today's video. This was by preparation. I wrote down the formula. I could pretend that I memorized it by editing this out. If this is still in this video, then I did not pretend. Um, OK, so let's look at, um, so first of all, what, what, how do we represent mathematically this pinkish, reddish line? So the formula for a line is typically written as y equals mx plus b. I will point out, however, that if you look in the statistics textbook, you might see something like y equals b0 plus b1 times x. This is the same exact formula. m refers to our b1 here as the slope, and b0 or b here is the quote unquote y intercept, which is the value where the line intersects the y axis. So the slope, this m value determines like which way does the line point, and then the y intercept is how high or low, uh, it, you know, where is that line relative to the x axis. So all we need to do is we need to both calculate m and b. So here's the thing. This is a, you, while we're looking at this, you know, most data sets that you might work with aren't just simple 2D data sets. There might be, you know, there's temperature, there's, you know, population of the city that the store is in. Maybe, you know, there's the hours that it's open. I, I don't know. You could think of like all sorts of other data inputs that might relate to the sale of ice cream. And this can actually be generalized much, uh, you know, this, this could be y equals b0 plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2. So there could actually be multiple linear, this is referred to as multiple linear regression. And generally, you know, the, the same math that I'm going to show you applies to this scenario, but it typically involves uh, matrix based calculations. Maybe I'll do that in a different video. But we're, it's simpler to look at in just this context with just one input, but we can extrapolate that. Uh, and you can think about it as instead of, you know, in, if instead of a line, you know, fitting this to a plane, right? If you had this as, you know, if there was just simply one other two, two data, two uh, input pieces of data. Okay. How are we doing so far? 
<laughs> it's still here. OK, so now let's look at this formula. Look, you can see I wrote it down on this piece of paper. Maybe I can auction this off on eBay. Or <laughs> nobody will want this. OK, uh, I'm going to need that piece of paper. OK, so here's how we calculate m, the slope. We calculate it as the sum. So I'm going to use this Greek letter sigma. It looks like an e, but it's not an e. It's a sigma, which means sum of x minus x with a line over it. And I'll talk about what that means times y minus y with a line over it. You could call that uh, y bar, I suppose, <laughs> divided by the sum of x minus x with a bar squared. OK, so let's think about what this means. So first of all, x bar or y bar, this means the mean or the average. So what this really is, is it's all of the x values added up together divided by how many there are. So you could think of x bar as being the sum. And sigma, by the way, means sum. So I've got to kind of unpack that a little bit. But the sum of, of every single x, so x index i, so x0, x1, x2, where i goes from 0 to n n being the total. So this is kind of mathematical notation to say, add up all the x. You can think of it as an array, right? An array of data points, add them all up, and then divide it by the total number there is, divided by n. So this is really what x bar is. It's just the average of all the x's. y bar is the average of all the y's. So this means get the average and then take each x minus the average times each y minus the average. And so this really is also, these, this sigma should really also have i goes from 0 to n. And this is x index i. This is y index i. We have this from 0 to n. This is x index i um, as well. So I'm not going to derive or approve this formula in this video, although if I can find some supplemental information, I'll link to it in this video's description, or maybe in the comments you can offer a suggestion. But you can kind of get a, uh, uh, an intuitive kind of sense of why this formula works. So first of all, imagine if x equals y. If the formula for the line were just y equals x, that would mean the slope would be 1. Right? The slope would be 1 if y equals x. Well, look at this. If y equals x, then x minus x bar times x minus x bar would be like that squared. So you could see how m would equal 1 if y equals x. And then you could sort of say the numerator is essentially the correlation. Uh, thank you to Kay Weekbot in the chat for typing it out like that, because I think that's a good way of thinking about it. You can see that you know, if y grow, you know, is, is y growing more uh, as x grows, or is x uh, is y uh, growing less as x grows, you can sort of see how this relationship is going to, uh, between the numerator and the denominator, is going to uh, give you a fraction that describes the slope of this line. So think about that. Hopefully it has some intuitive sense, and I'm sure people in the comments will write some nice explanations that, that help with that understanding. So this is really it. So what I want to do now, in the next, I want to do this in the next video, is I want to program this. So I think what I'll do is I'll program it in such a way where a user can click and add data points. And each time the user clicks, I will, I will implement this formula and draw the line of best fit um, according to the ordinary least squares method um, in Canvas in the browser. And after we do that, I will talk about, well, what are some reasons why linear regression doesn't, might not make sense for your data? Um, but this is the idea. This is just to, just to try to recap for a second. The reason we're doing this is this is a model, right? The idea of a model, the idea of a model is you try to fit it to the data. We have known data, training data, temperature with actual sales. We want to fit our model. Our model just has two parameters, the slope of the line and the y-intercept. And once we solve for those parameters, we can make new predictions. And even though it's kind of overly simplistic here, this is the exact same process that, we will, that I'll employ again and again. 
Once we look at a simple perceptron, then a multi-layered perceptron, and then things like convolutional networks or recurrent networks, all of this, all, this is laying the foundation for uh, more sophisticated, robust machine learning based systems. Oops, I forgot. So for the formula of a line, y equals mx plus b, the slope is the more complex calculation, actually. Once we have that slope, it's pretty easy to calculate the y-intercept. Where is b? And the formula for that is b equals y bar minus m times x bar. And you can kind of see why this is the case, right? Because remember, y equals mx plus b. So all I need to do is say uh, b equals y minus mx, right? And we could just use the average of all the x and all the y to figure out where should that line be shifted. So this is, a, this is the formula to calculate that y-intercept. So we can do this with a statistical method. We run through all the data. We calculate the slope. We calculate the y-intercept. And we have that line, that formula for the line for which we can make predictions for new data. Okay, so I hope this was helpful and made some sense to you and you have a, 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 an idea of what linear regression is, what the least squares method is, and if you're inclined to continue, just keep following to the next video and I will program this particular algorithm from scratch. Okay, thanks very much. See you there, maybe. Woo.